Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Clay Knives, and welcome back to another episode of Alundra. It has been a long time, I know, but improvements have been made. A new headset and microphone have been purchased, which makes gameplay so much easier. I've seen Django Unchained, and while I'm not sure if I enjoy it better than Inglorious Bastards, I believe I still rank Inglorious Bastards higher for right now. It is still an excellent movie, one of the best I've seen all year. And a happy new year to all. And here I am, playing Alundra. I don't particularly want to, but damn it. We have to finish what we started. That's my New Year's resolution. And so here's Alundra. Good old Alundra. And... Giles has just died, and... Who the fuck knows what's happening in this game anymore? Let's just go talk to people. Come on, Alundra. Let's go check out and see what the mayor has to say. What's up, mayor? Die! No? Okay. How do I... The most religious person in our village has died so horribly. If his prayers were not answered, mine stand not a chance in hell. The gods have most certainly abandoned us. Well, it's nice to hear that the mayor has completely given up all hope on the town. And... I can't say I particularly blame him. We saved Eleni, but... No one really knew who she was. Hey, Joffrey. Hey, you! Peasant! Why are the gods doing this to us? You cannot answer me, can you? Neither could my father when I asked him. Well, it's nice of you to be so thoughtful. So, Django Unchained. Probably will see it again. Giles' body is gone, but we had a funeral and prayed for him anyway. I was going to call you, but Kisha said that you must be very tired. There's no end to the horror in this village, is there, Alondra? I was very tired and I didn't want to go to your douchebag. I'm sorry, Giles is dead. Well, let's go talk to Septimus. He usually knows what's going on. Hey, Octavius. Alondra, I've been looking for you, friend. Have you seen Ronin? After yesterday's events, he believes that Melzaz is the god of the Merg. If he's right, we won't just be fighting nightmares. We will also have to battle the white monkeys. I don't know if the people of this village are strong enough, Alundra. Honestly, I don't know if I have yet had the strength within me. So... The Merg attack couldn't be denied, and he's saying he's their god. Ronan's basically coming right out in the open now. Things have gotten so fucking bad in this village. So Dango Unchained. Excellent movie. Fantastic movie. And... I could give an in-depth opinion on why I like the movie. And apparently a lot of people are going to give their opinions, but I would just say go to redlettermedia.com when they have their video review of Dango Unchained. I will probably agree with everything they say, and if I don't, I will comment upon it. Suffice it to say, I think it is a... Positive sign that a movie can be made... A genre picture that combines westerns and black exploitation, dealing head-on with the issue of slavery by a white filmmaker and be enjoyed by both blacks and whites in the audience. Because when I was in the theater, the mix was probably 50-50, probably a little more black. I think this is important because in the, in the past, 
pictures that dealt with racism always had to have been done with a certain style. They had to be delivering a concrete message that had to be clearly defined. And the movie had to be in some one of several types of genres, either as a um, an issue picture. It always had to be a, a message picture and an issue picture that slavery is wrong and racism is wrong, and that's always had to be the issue. And take Amistad, for instance. I mean, it is a courtroom drama about the morality of slavery, and that is what is proven in the end that these men cannot be held captured. I know it's not disproving slavery as a whole, but that is the message of the movie. And I think those message movies tie things up into too tidy an answer and merely signify that a division still exists because cert only certain kind of films can be made about this subject matter that took place 150 years ago. Not to say that racism doesn't still exist, but that, in my mind, is the reason those certain types of films can be made and it actually creates a divide when it's when you say only a message or issue movie can be made about slavery and they can only be made by black filmmakers and i think it dilutes the issue at hand django and change is a hero picture it is an epic hero tale in the tradition of dr king schultz's german nationalism and because it is told that way within a genre and picture, particularly black exploitation, which is not allowed to be made anymore, by combining that with the Western, you feel the grotesque comedy of that era in history, as well as the absolute brutal horror of the slavery. And by setting it in the realm of a heroic picture and making it a genre picture, making it about the cinema rather than the message, the horrors of the age just stand out for themselves, and it becomes a story that takes place in this setting rather than a story about this setting. And I think that is amazing. That is the language of cinema taking something that was 150 years ago in the past and transforming it into a way where it can be enjoyed by all comers based on its own merits. You can sit there and enjoy the movie, and the horrors of slavery are there, and Django does have his re his revenge, but it's still not a message picture. It's not saying you have to come out of this movie feeling empowered or guilty or anything. You can come out of this movie feeling like you just got blown away and you have been talked to in the language of cinema. And I may not be articulating this as well as Red Letter Media will, but that is why I love the movie. And I think Spike Lee is a huge fucking douchebag. Because A, he's slagging a movie that he's never going to see. And B, even though he says he's only speak for himself, it's, it's not about Spike Lee saying he is doing this to respect his ancestors, though... My argument would be that you're a hugely successful filmmaker. Slavery happened 150 years ago. And that's my argument is you're a hugely successful filmmaker who made most of your films exploring race relations, and that's fine. And it's okay if you have an opinion that you think the movie is offensive in a certain way. My argument is you haven't even seen the movie, so fuck you. And the argument he's saying that he won't see it out of respect for his ancestors is just reinforcing the Spike Lee idea that, that only black filmmakers can make certain kinds of race relation films in certain kinds of ways, and they have a monopoly on that genre of storytelling. And I do not agree with that. It is art. It is the movies. Anyone can tell any story about anything. It is our shared history. And... I think it speaks to Spike Lee's mentality that anytime he tries to make a genre picture like Inside Man, they're not amazing. They're just genre pictures. Only Tarantino can take a genre film and combine it with these brutal truths and make a compelling movie. And he does that here. There are parts of this movie where you are laughing at just the grotesque comedy of how the white actors treat the black actors in the movie. 
and then it goes right into undercutting that comedy through some scenes of stark brutality that just really hammer home how underneath this southern civil genility was a horrible perpetuation of an entire people enslaved by feudal barons and this was taking place only 150 years ago and by making it a genre picture and not using the language of cinema to communicate a message but using this setting and this time to communicate the pure joy of cinema itself hammers home for me on a level more than any other film with the exception of Roots the absolute brutality of the era than a bazillion other message films I've seen about the genre Spike Lee's big deal is Quentin Tarantino's their filmmaker and that's my two cents on Django Unchained it is darkly funny it will make you uncomfortable at points it is brutally violent it is a heroic epic it has some fantastic scenes it is brilliantly acted I have to see it again because Inglorious Bastards is very very good and I do think Inglorious Bastards has a stronger ending but I will probably see it again and I think it is a fantastic film and I am so glad Tarantino just had the balls to make it and to be able to say fuck you because he's approaching this as a film because what he's thinking is I'm gonna make this film that's gonna take place in the south it's gonna be a western cross with black exploitation set in the deep south it's gonna be called Django Unchained two years before the Civil War against the issue of slavery and I read a review where it was the movie is pure wish fulfillment fantasy if you were a slave and that's why it works because that's the fantasy of if you are a slave all you can think of is outside of moments where you're fearing for your life is killing all of your enslavers and destroying their house and it fulfills that fantasy it is that kind of heroic epic and that's what I think is most brilliant about the film is it takes those nationalistic German heroic epics and successfully grafts that onto this film set in the deep south so that's black exploitation film crossed with a western film and that becomes its theme and because it's about a slave rising up it completely works it's a fucking awesome movie it is so fucking good God, it is so fucking good. I really need to learn how to play these games and talk about things at the same time. And the reason I don't do that is because I do voices for all the characters, and that really worked in Vagrant Story, and I don't think it worked here. We're going to continue in it for now, but the next game I play is just going to be me playing and talking. What do you got to say, Rumi? Ronan told me to get you all out of the village, Alundra, but I refused. I don't understand why he wanted you gone. We need you now more than ever, more than we ever have. Oh god, it's the wrong side. No one in this village has ever seen the Magni enforced. Maybe it's time for us all to leave the village. Now Ronan is saying the murder coming, they worship Melz as I'm part of the problem. It's trouble. You know, I had a prophecy about you kids way back at the beginning of the game. Hey Lundra! The Merg are just big monkeys that need some firm discipline, right? Burgess isn't afraid of the Merg, but I am. We might look alike, but we are different in so many ways. You are. So... God, what a film. DiCaprio... DiCaprio is great in this film. Everyone's great. DiCaprio is playing an idiot. Like, his Calvin Candy is just a spoiled, pampered moron who believes he's an intellectual. He's a complete fool who would be incapable of producing anything intellectual himself, but a brutal sadist. Ronan does not seem to be a sadist in the least by Giles Parson. They used to be almost like father and son. Because he used them. Um, they didn't invite me to the funeral. Fantastic. Uh, Jamie Foxx, this is probably the best role I've ever seen him in. To say what you will about his problems on set, but he is a quiet, stoic Django, but in his eyes, you can see he's learning and watching and observing at all times and beginning to learn the ways of 
forging his own destiny. His arc is becoming that hero. And he does that extremely well during the course of the game. I mean, the movie. He, it, it, it's, it's a very physical performance. And... He nails it. Christoph Waltz is always as awesome, basically playing the antithesis of Hans Landa, King Schultz, the most nationalistic and most understanding, sympathetic, and human individual in the entire film. It's great. What's that? I appreciate your worry, but I will be fine, Alandra. As long as I remember my brother, he will always live within my heart. I'm sure it is the same way you feel about Jess. Hell of a thing when Jess died. What's up, Maya? I examined the murk you defeated, and found this on one of the bodies. What? Ooh, a key to the murk. Now this is interesting. The Merrick Woods are northwest of the village. They're overrun with thick and thorny bushes. Too many to chop through with our weapons. I know. We could use the fire wand from the flame manor to the southwest. I was walking west from Novice Cabin on the coastline, and I found a small building called the Flame Manor. Inside it, there's said to be an item called the Fire Wand. The wand has the power to control the element of fire. I couldn't understand what the Lord of the Manor was telling me. Perhaps you will understand what he's trying to communicate. Well, we already got the wand, bitch! So, a key to the Murgwoods. They're working with Melzaz. They have two crests. She went to the Fire Manor, talked to the Lord. I gotta go there to get the fire one to burn it down, I guess. I guess we're taking the fight to him. I mean, the village is almost ready to fall apart. Fuck it. I guess we're gonna go fight some fucking Merg. Kill a bunch of them. And then... Samuel L. Jackson as this evil, self-hating Uncle Ruckus. Fuck all, fuck the world, where is a race completely fucked, I might as well get mine. Because I don't want to be working in a field just to die. Self-loathing, self-hating asshole Steven, the head house slave. And the true power in Candyland. A self-hating man. How long will this terrible tragedy continue to plague our poor village? You need supplies? No, we're good. Brilliantly nuanced performance. Come to think of it, I've seen Merg in the eastern forest. Scary, isn't it? Just an absolutely brilliant performance by him. Just. Absolutely brutal. He is so good. He is so good. It's really amazing. Give him the Oscar. Give him two. Have you seen Septimus? He was looking for you. He seemed to be quite worried. Frantic even. Talk to Septimus become more and more useless as the game has gone on. So Django Unchained, see it. Um, I'm expecting some big things for this channel uh, for next year. I do have another Let's Play going, but I'm going to be trying to add music and videos. I'm really going to try and, and step it up here. I'm going to try and, and put a lunger down as, as fast as I can. That's the shop. He's over here. I won't lie to you, Alondra. I've already craved a stiff drink more than a few times. I know I'll have to fight those desires for the rest of my life, but I shall prevail. And get to the chopper. All right, that was terrible. It 
It's neat to talk and have only one voice come out of my mouth. Thank you so much, Alundra. God, all you did was yell and curse at me the whole game. I'm really not that impressed. Let's go. Alright, everybody loves this town, and we gotta talk to everybody in the town. What do you got? Um, no. Keep your chanting to yourself. Exploring the town. So what else has been going on? I can't believe the Merg are attacking my village. How can I defend my wife against creatures strong enough to tear my arms off? My poor husband is sinking back into his depression. He's starting to speak of death all the time. Just as he did before, it's kind of a downer. Why don't you give him a nice little blowjob? That should straighten things up. Well, everyone's pretty despondent. The town's kind of completely disintegrated. I guess it's stop the murder, we all die. Except for Bonair. He won't die. My time is almost up, kid. I don't care if the gods exist or not, but I hope there's a heaven for us. Dude, it's okay if not everyone here believes in the gods. Faith of a few and a little weed is all we need, bro. Well, I appreciate the weed, but you are supporting the enemy. It's some gorgeous cinematography in that film. It's just some amazing stuff. The film is brilliantly shot. Tarantino knows how to write a screenplay. You can find my at Keisha's house! Go fuck yourself, Alanda! Go fuck yourself for killing my naughty! I loved her! Oh, I loved her, you fucker! Um, we'll see it again. I just, uh, I worked Christmas, I worked Thanksgiving, I'm working New Year's. I just, <sighs> fucking bullshit. Whatever. Well, who is here again? Gustav. Well, I guess we'll talk to Ronan and go to this Merg Woods. Check it out. What else has been happening? Um, nothing anyone is going to care about. Let's go north. I do believe we will get every item in the game except for the ancient sword. I mean, King Snow's sword. The Merg live in the Northwest Forest. I personally believe they are just misunderstood, much like me. Oh, I doubt that. Sybil, may all your dreams be happy. Fine, brave hunter, stinky man. Jalen, he had a passion for life. Lyman, he loved his work. We don't know why. Olin, loved by all, feared by none. Zane, the smile will continue to brighten our memories. Six tombstones. <sighs> Alundra, I'm gonna start playing you like Bash the Stampede when I get the energy. <laughs>